What's up guys, this is Fowen here. This is a little tutorial on how to make your animations look realistic and uh, well, I'll say just realistic in two sort of ways. Uh, one of them is making them look visually look realistic as in the lighting, making them match the scene and the second realism factor will be making them not robotic all nice and smooth, basically how to do that bit. Well, First of all, I'm going to do the lighting. And as you can see, I'm rendering something out now. Um, and that has some nice lighting, uh, in my opinion. That's why I chose it. Um, because, obviously, you want your models to look like they're actually there. So, if I just open that scene up. This is this one. If I just do this now. Oh, well, hang on. There we go, turn it on. And let me render that out. I've just got my background image and I now want my characters to look like they're actually there. Instead of just them being all bold and stand out and look stupid. So I wait for this to to do its thing. It takes about 45 seconds per frame with this type of lighting. Um, but it pays off, I think. I'll show you a bit more about lighting in a bit once this is done. So as you can see there's shadows being generated. So this shadow here is being generated from his head. His arms in the way which creates shadows on his body. The same with the gun. Um, and then obviously this guy's got the gun, the sniper on his back. And the hat look is even creating little shadows. And it's little things like that that create the realism on the character in my opinion. See, look, there's one little shadow here. You have to proper look into it in detail to see whereabouts the shadows are. Those are the little ones I'm talking about. Alright, so that's done. Now, I think, yeah, that looks right for the scene. Because, obviously, I can't change this picture yet. But I thought I'll just get the models as best as I can just for this background so I was happy with this what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to take this picture and bring down the dark like darken it a bit and I think that would pretty much match these characters here but um, yeah what I, I always do is I always create shadows not uh, I don't know how to explain it like let me just show you <laughs> I think that would be a lot easier I want them so here's the camera I want the light sort of facing them. Obviously, this light. Um, don't worry about that one. Where, where is it? That was the one, the back. Now, all I need is just the front light. I added the back light in because it, sort, it sorts out some of the edges and it makes it look quite nice. So, um, where is it? Uh, so, as you can see here, this is all light. It got light and the back hasn't really. You can't really see anything. But if you turn it over, this has got all the, the, the nice lighting. So always put, so wherever you can see, that's where you want the lighting to be. It, want, it needs to be facing out because you want your models, whatever, to light up. But you don't have to do it dead on in front. I mean, look, this key, which is the one just up here in the air, look, there it is. Now, is that a bit of an angle? And the reason I've put that at an angle is because then it will generate shadows at an angle. So when I when I said obviously here, the jet, the shadows are sort of going left. Here's the head. The shadows are on the left of the head. That's because I have put my light up here, which means when it sh sh uh, the beat the light goes left and hits the head, it will reflect the shadow on the left of the head. If you, if that understands, like in that line of path. So you don't want it just dead on. You want it. You want it visible so the light can reach, but like all the models. But you don't want to create dull shadows by it. So you want to angle it a bit, and that way you can still have nice lighting and effective shadows. So uh, always bear that in mind, because as you can see here, both of the models are lit up, and I've also angled the light so the shadows will be shown more. And Showing a little bit more shadow is sometimes, I think, a little bit better. In my opinion, when I've had like two models, 
uh, well, not two models, but two different versions. One with visible, like a lot of shadows, and one with very little. I've always preferred the one with a lot of shadows. But you need it in about the middle. You don't want too much and you don't want too little. You need it just about in the middle, like just about right. Um, and I think that's what makes it a bit more realistic. And the colours that I've used, the, um, as you can see, the backlight is a white. As I turn it around, that's just a normal white light. But that's, I won't go into too much detail about that one because I'm not actually using it. But the, to get this type of orangey like type look, obviously if you're going to have sunlight or anything, so sunlight especially, it's going to be orange. It's going to be an orange light. But what you don't want to do, hang on, snap that back in place. Let's go back to that. You don't want to go all the way to orange. Otherwise, this is what it does. And we don't want that. <laughs> so what you need to do is you need to balance it out. So when I go to my colour picker on that, that on that light, I it's literally just right near the white. Make sure you've got this selection on orangey, yellowy or whatever. And you just need to sli slightly tint it. And that is all you need. Once it's slightly tinted, you're all good to go. That is, all, And then you've still got that orange type effect on your models like, or like I have here so you don't need too much light on this part you just need a dull orange and that will give you a, a sort of a realistic feel and the fact that you have that orange sometimes makes the black shadows stand out a bit more and it obviously you're we're all used to real life lighting from the sun you look at someone's face and, uh, and they've got shadows on their face. We're all used to that because we see it every day. On here you don't. So it's it's all new on here. It's like learning it all again. But I think it looks better like this with a slight orange tint. I don't know why it's just it, it makes it all look a little bit better. And the fill color is a slight blue. And I shine that from the other side. Say so some like sometimes you have sky. Now, obviously, in this scene, it's indoors, and it's like, well, you don't really have sky because you've got a roof, but there may be some sort of lighting. Say, here, look at these orange Chinese letter things. That's orange. That could be given off an orange light onto the, the player. So I, I still add the colours in just in case. Um, and even add the blue in here. So if I go, you can't really see it, but here we've got all the orange. And then here we go bluish. Yeah, you can see the blue kind of, but obviously that's only shown a little bit. The main colour is the orange, so that's going to overpower it by far. But you don't notice the blue. That's the thing. You can't. You look at the picture. And you don't. You don't think that is a blue light shining on there, but it does look make it look nice at the same time. So just run through again. What I'll do is I would shine a a dim orange nut, uh, sorry, orange light facing the players and I would use area lights so go to general type area um, you don't want to put them too far away or too close you need to, because if you have them too close then they're going to be really bright light on the character um, if you're too far away then it's going to be too dim but if I just hide the background you can see these are the three lights that's where I've positioned them so we've got the orange light, the blue light, and the white light. So they look far away, but you don't want them any further away from that. And you can see what effect that gives off on my characters. So, so yeah, that's what I'll do is I'll shine the orange light facing the characters from whatever camera view you've got. So for, this is like my camera view here. So the light sort of needs to be behind the camera. I added a white light onto the back just to brighten the edges up. Or as you're gonna have sh shadowed edges and that, and I thought, nah, I don't want it. So I added the light at the back, and I just give that plain white. Um, and I did brighten it up a bit, obviously, bring the intensity up a bit. And the same with the blue. Um, you don't see a lot of it. That's because I've dimmed it down a bit. So if I go to the fill, I put it to 50%. So you have a little play around with the, the intensity of the lights as well. Let's just turn that back on. Actually, the intense. Oh, I'm sorry. The intensity, just bring them up, bring them down, see what the model looks like, because as you can see, that's where the blue will be shining on. 
but I brought mine down to about 50. So it's barely noticeable, but it still gives a nice effect. It's people think I think like oh you need to put lots of light in, you need to do all this to make it look good, but it doesn't actually work like that. Yeah, you have to put lots of lighting in, but it's the level of light in that is important. So um, don't, don't ever think that, oh yeah, I'll put this in, I'll put this in, just like, I don't know, just completely fill it with lights. I think, yep, that's going to look nice because I've done a lot of light in. It, it's, it, you can have lots of lights, but very dim. That could create a better effect, actually, depend on how it's used. But yeah, that's the lighting stage of it, so hopefully all of you understood that. But like I say, the more you practice it, the more you play around with it. It does take patience and time, but that's how you're going to improve, I'm afraid. Like, um, I, I've not known one person to just go, like, look at a tutorial like that and can just do it. Um, God, that'd be fucking awesome, that would, but but yeah, that's, that's just how it is, I'm afraid. So... Again, let's uh, let's open up a new project because now I'm gonna start animating something really quickly, so it's not gonna be great. Um, just to show you guys how to make smooth smooth animations, basically. So turn the light on and off and that. All right, so I've got my rig for this guy and hide the skeleton. I don't know what I want him to do. Um, first of all, I would hit IK chains on him. So what I, what you have to do... Actually, you know, first of all, I'm going to add IK chains on his knees. But before I do that, I need to just bend his knees a little bit more. Just so when I click create IK chain, it establishes which way he wants the, um, the knees to bend. So if you bend knees a bit more, it sort of shows Cinema 4D clearly that you want it to bend that way. Or else they'll start flipping the other way if, if it's not done right. So that we, what we do is we select the top, like the hip, to the ankle. And that should be three joints. The hip, knee, and ankle. And we just go on to the, whichever leg you want. I'm going to start with the right. So you click that, hold shift, and click ankle, and it's selected all of them. Then you go to character, commands, create IK chain. And just do that same with the left. Hip to ankle, character, commands, create IK chain. And then what I usually do is I just create a null, drag these little left ankle joint goals that have just been made into the null and rename that controls and then just drag that into like just under the skin. And the reason we've made these is because if you want to move your legs, you don't have to therefore move your hip, you don't have to move your knee and you don't have to move your ankle. This has kind of linked it all together. So if I just grab the uh, the right ankle now, I can move this around anywhere. Lift it up, you know, and I can do like a I don't know any sorts of animation. I can kick him if I want. I can I don't know. You can have somebody running. Uh, you can do lots of stuff with the IK chains. But um, one thing that I will point out when using IK chains, um, you have to animate the goals which I've put in the controls don't start going down to the knees and that that won't work <laughs> you need to start animating these so if you want the move, leg to move you hit a keyframe down you move along and you move that which is the left ankle joint and that will move the legs for you and that does somehow create a smoother looking animation as well because with the IK chains are uh, with the IK chain sorry it sort of creates the movement for you in a way look it moves your, your, all three parts of the, the leg. It moves your ankle, it moves your knees, and it moves your hips. And doing nice, like little animations like that, it does make your animations a bit smoother. So if I just start off the animation here, move forward, lift the leg up. Oh, a bit more extended. And come back down. If I just now play that, I'm still looking a bit robotic, but that's because nothing else is moving. Um, but yeah, that has just created us a nice, smooth look in the kick. Obviously, you need a lot more stuff, so maybe uh, another thing, actually. 
when you create an IK chain, they stay there. So I can grab my root, which is the pelvis bit, I can bring them down and his knees will start bending. That's because you've set the IK chains here and they will not move unless you move them. So you can do little, I don't know, say, say I do that again. Keyframe, when he kicks, I want him to lean back, no, no, I want him to lean forward and go down a bit. Uh, just move that along actually. And then scroll forward and I want him to come back to, to kind of how he was. That looks so terrible. <laughs> but I would only use IK chains on the arms and the legs. And for the arms, just do exactly the same. Um, I If I sometimes have four joints, you go shoulder, elbow, forearm and wrist. You can still use them. Four is still alright, so select all them, character, commands, create IK chain, and just drag that in the controls. And another thing, you cannot rotate IK chains. It will not work. So don't bother trying. <laughs> you have to move them. And you have to move them into position. And you have to keep moving your camera around to get it right. But if you get it all right done and used to it, it won't be a problem. And look at that. That just so much easier for you guys. Um, how to make other smoother. Yeah. Uh, another thing, last thing I'll, I'll just quickly mention. When making an animation, you don't just want to move one bit. I've seen lots of people just move arms and head. You if you can, try and animate every single bit on here, even if it's a little bit. So grab his lower, I'll, I'll hit the auto keyframe tool on, even if it's moving his lower body slightly. I don't know, I'm just playing around now, I'm not, I don't even know what I'm actually doing, but I'm just sort of trying to make uh, like a little, little point. So the little movements of the body, And all these little movements will come together. All like everything will work together in order to create a better animation because it looks more realistic. I mean, I, it, when you see somebody walk, it's like every bit of his body is moving. And some people leave those little bits still, and that's where I think they might be going wrong. Well, not going wrong. Obviously, they can still be getting used to it. But yeah, look, that's. That's just quickly what I've made. I don't know what it is, but um, as you can see, look at the movement on just the body, in, just the body in general. Body and yeah, just the body because I animated the arms. But because every the lower, the middle, and the upper body are all moving in different places, but ever so slightly, it doesn't look that bad. And if you do that throughout your whole animation, it should be fine. And um, that's pretty much all the advice I can kind of give you because I don't know how else to sort of. I had to put it into words. Um, so yeah, hope this guy is, um, hope it helped. Uh, if you like it, um, or you want to see anything else, um, please comment, subscribe if you haven't, all that stuff, okay, you always say. <laughs> um, yeah, what was I going to say? I was going to say something, but I can't remember now. No, I've forgotten it. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video, please.